not going to be easy to follow my wife. <laughs> Some of the sentiments you may have heard, but they need repeating. This weekend has simply been overwhelming. Some of you may remember who worked closely with me, both on the professional and the lay level, that I dreamed of having a vision of working towards this weekend. Not to necessarily honor me, although that was clearly part of it as I announced my retirement, but to look at the 70th anniversary of this congregation, 70th anniversary of the State of Israel, to rejoice, to celebrate, and to plan for the future. And therefore, we've raised significant funds to ensure that future. We put out a book of its history. You have an ad book in front of you, which is like a telephone book. And uh, we have truly celebrated this weekend through over 300 people at a Shabbat dinner, yesterday having to put up chairs all over the Field Family Sanctuary and the Passet Lounge. And then, of course, today, as I look around and see all of you, and you can see all of me. So I thought I would now deliver my Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur sermons <laughs> for 5780, since you won't hear them. But then I remembered, I don't have to write them. I can sit in the congregation, offer comments whether it's too cold, too hot, not enough light, the service is too long. In short, what all of you have been doing for the last 30 plus years as I and my colleagues have been on the Vima. What I really want to do this evening, because I've spoken about my rabbinate on many different occasions in the last little while, is to participate in the mitzvah of Hakarat Tov, of showing gratitude, to recognize that it has been my fortune to have a great deal of joy, happiness, luck, to behold it and to grasp it. As one of my teachers, Allah wa Shalom, Rabbi Simon Greenberg, a teacher to many, many of us, wrote, said at a rabbinical assembly convention, gratitude leads to contentment, and that leads to happiness. It's all found in the word ashray. Ashray yovech vevetecha really means that we are not simply happy, we are contented, and we are ultimately filled with gratitude. I'm thrilled to say that I'm very grateful this evening, content and very happy. So the first measure of gratitude is I want to give gratitude to the Kodesh Baruch Hu, to God. As Yaakov prepares to meet Esav in Parshat Ve'ishlach, a very important parsha for me and one which I will speak on during Thanksgiving weekend, a little later, he would have an encounter with an ish, a man in the middle of the night, an angel himself, never sure. My favorite passage in all of Torah and the essence of what encountering Torah is for me. But as he prepares for that, he approaches God and says, Katonti mikola chasadim mikola met asherasita eravdecha. I am unworthy of all the kindnesses that you have so steadfastly shown your servant. I have been very fortunate in my life in so many, many ways. I was born to wonderful parents. I have a magnificent family. Thank God I've had my health. And sometimes I know you make your own luck, but I'm thankful to God for giving me the capacity to take advantage of it. Next is my family. As you've heard from Bryna and from David, and you will hear from all others, we have tried to be as close as possible to the family members uh, that we have had, wherever they may be. We're now spread out in Toronto, Boston, New York, and of course Israel. I'm thankful to my parents, to Bernie and Dorothy Kurtz, Aleyama Shalom, for giving me and my sisters a stable home, a Jewish education, a model of very strong values, a sense of commitment to the Jewish world, and to work with it. I want to introduce, somebody's asked me to introduce my family. They've been with you the entire time. My sister Rini and her husband, Alan. Unfortunately, my sister Janice is no longer with us. As you, many of you know, she passed away. But Alan is here and her son, Jordan. We are thrilled that David, Judy, and Ellie are with us. And then 
a whole cousin's table who are very important to us, to my cousins, Heather, and to Marvin, to Rhoda, and to Clifford, to so many people, including my Mukhatanim, who are here from Worcester, the Kaufmans, and then, of course, Shira and Avi, and thankfully at home, uh, we would say, hopefully sleeping, <laughs> Sammy and Mia. They've been with us the entire time. Last week, last Shabbat, we spent it with Hadassah and Chaim and our grandchildren there. So it's really been a time for family. If my father would have been here for the entire weekend, he would have said, not bad. <laughs> and my mother would have said, my heart is full. I'm thankful for their lessons and their example and the closeness of our family. And I pray that uh, we'll be able to spend more time together wherever it may be so that we can rejoice with one another in many simchas. <coughs> I frankly couldn't be prouder of my daughters Hadassah and Shira and their selections of mates, Chaim and Avi. I love them all. It's a very special time I've had is when I was involved in the rabbinical assembly and the law committee and so many things and would travel to New York. Each of them spent some time on their own on the Upper West Side of New York. Well, the meetings were fine. The covet of being the heads of organizations, the best part was to take them out to dinner one at a time and to spend face time with them as they were no longer kids, but now no longer young adults, but truly adults. We've seen them grow, become parents, and we could be no prouder of them than we are at this moment. What a treat they have given us, six grandchildren, who we adore and with whom we look to spend more time in the future. I want to acknowledge, as I said before, my siblings and Bryna's siblings. We have mentioned, of course, Leah as well, who is in Israel with, I don't know how many grandchildren at this point, thank God. And those who are here on all of us have really been, as David said correctly, one family. There's nothing that went on in my family that Brian's parents were invited to or extended family, and the opposite as well. There's nothing that went on in their family that my family wasn't involved with as well. Brian, it truly has been my lifetime partner. Those of you who've gone through the Valve or the Gesher class know that I've always done a program on interfaith dating and said that you never know who you're going to meet and when you're going to meet that person. For instance, I've always said, I wasn't hired for this reason, but truth be told, I met Bryna when I was 15 and she was 14. And that basically was it. We went together for seven years, we were engaged for two years, and now we've been married for over 45 years. Talk about a lifetime. Bryna, you have been my rock. And all I can say is found in the words of the Robert Browning poem, Rabbi Ben Ezra. Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be. I look forward to the next part of our journey together. As you said correctly, my Azer Kenegdo, my chief supporter, my chief person who gives me a great deal of help and sustenance and also my chief critic as well. But that's part of it. And therefore, I look forward to those kind of relationships, whether it be in Israel, here, or wherever it may be. I want to thank all those who made this weekend possible in an unbelievable, memorable time for us. I'm fortunate to have worked and to continue to work with a wonderful staff. I'm thrilled that both Rabbi Jay Stein and Rabbi David Lerner are here, with whom I worked so closely for so many years. Um, you saw Chazan Rosenblum, also Chazan Galler, and of course my present clergy friends and colleagues with whom I continue to work. It has been a pleasure and an honor. This congregation is very fortunate to have them as your rabbis, your cantors, your educators, your administrators, your youth leaders. They have made this place something very special. And if I have enriched their lives and helped them a little bit and mentored them, all I would say is Dayenu. I want to thank the co-chairs for the many hours and hours of detail of working and continuing to work on this particular event. Those who worked on the food, the decorations, the seating, 
the music, Don Kagan has been part of our lives for many years, the publicity, the photography, the maintenance, the security, the ad book, the history of Bethel, the campaign, the administration, and on and on and on. You know, of course, that the people have said that it takes a village. Well, to put this on, it takes a congregation. It takes a loving community. And I cannot thank enough the people who have given their time to this particular event on an ongoing basis. I know it has been an intrusion in your lives, but I hope you feel this evening that it was worthwhile. I know that we do. And I don't want to single anyone out because as usual, if I name some people, I'll leave somebody out and I'll go out and they'll say, oh, he didn't really like me or know my name anyhow. And I don't want to do that. But please know how much we thank you, how much we appreciate your work. It was very important for me before to, uh, to spend some time with colleagues. It has been a privilege to work with colleagues in the Ravenet, in the Federation, in the education world of many different backgrounds. It has been a joy to work with all kinds of uh, educators, of rabbis of the different streams. It is indeed part of my role and part of my life. Lagdil Torah Hadira, to raise the specter of Torah and to enjoy it and to relish it and to fulfill, indeed, to work on behalf of Am Yisrael, Bechol Makom Shehem, wherever they are and wherever they may be. In his new book, The Next Person You Meet in Heaven, by Mitch Albom, which I finished this morning, he has someone say to the chief character, Annie, remember this, Annie, when we build, we build on the shoulders of those who have come before us. I've always felt that that's the case, that the founders of this congregation, the previous senior rabbis, those who have been the leaders, I've just stood on their shoulders. And if I've added a little bit, if I've enhanced their vision, if I've helped their dream, then I feel that the years have been worthwhile. This is actually what I've tried to do for over 30 years. I thank those upon whose shoulders I stood and continue to stand those who work with me to make this community even more knowledgeable, observant, Zionist, and caring. To you, my extended family, wherever you are in this particular room and beyond, to members of my congregation, North Suburban Synagogue Bethel. I've said it before and I'll say it again, with all of the accolades that I've received and the awards, nothing has made me feel better is that when you come to me and introduce me to somebody else says, this is my rabbi. That is what I've tried to be to each and every one of you and to your extended families. I can sit on the pulpit and look around on a Shabbat morning at you and say, hmm, that person's wedding I did, that person's brit milah I did, that person I mourned with when I lost their parent. Just think of the life cycle events over the course of 30 years. I thank you for allowing me to be part of your lives, to be with you at time of sorrow, to help you and rejoice at wonderful times of B'nai Mitzvah and baby namings and Ritot. It's so many things that really remain with me and will continue to reign with me. And as Brian has said, you've been there for us as we've suffered losses, as we've rejoiced, as we have been part of a caring community. Most of all, I thank you for a lot for trusting me to be your rabbi, your visionary, your teacher, your mentor. It's been indeed a great privilege. And so there's a new book coming out, which I hope to read when it does, written by A.J. Jacobs, who writes in his new book, Thanks a Thousand. In researching this book, I came to realize that gratitude is actually Jewish. And that's what I want to leave you with this evening. Let us all be grateful for this community, for our friendship, for our sense of belonging to one another, to be living at a time of the Jewish world when there is a state of Israel. As I was quoted not too long ago, and I've said many times from the pulpit, I am, and many of you are, the first generation in 2,000 years that does not know a world without the state of Israel. That's a privilege, but it's also a sense of obligation. And so we hope to add our voices, 
our help and our lives to Medinat Yisrael and to continue on behalf of Kal Yisrael. Many of you have asked, will we be coming back? Well, we hope that our home will be in Jerusalem, but there's too many things happening in this side of North America as well. We hope to be in Toronto to visit family, to be in Boston. Maybe I'll even be invited to New York. Maybe. <laughs> and as we've said, we have business interests in Chicago. We've been here for too long. And I'm sure we'll be back in many different kinds of ways, hopefully invited back with a sense of love and concern that you've shown us these last number of years. So let me conclude with this very Jewish attitude. Toda, merci, gracias, spasibo, thank you. It has been a privilege, a great privilege, to be part of this community and I pray that we will keep in touch, sharing smachot and besorot tovot, good tidings and good occasions. As we've said, for us, I hope, for each of you individually, for this community at large, the best is yet to be. Lishana haba'a bi Thank you.